We talk a lot about home computers and vintage home computers here on the Vintage Geek channel, but it's not very often that you get the opportunity to actually unbox an original vintage computer from the factory, original sealed packaging. Today we're going to do that on Vintage Geek. Back in 1984, IBM decided to get more into the personal computing game to compete with the likes of Apple II and Commodore by introducing a new product in their lineup called the PC Junior. Now, this particular product is uh, widely documented on the internet as being a failure, and we're not going to go too much into that today. If you want to see some good history on the PC Junior, there's plenty of videos out there. But we have a rare opportunity today because in our collecting, we actually ran across an IBM PC Junior that is, for all intents and purposes, like opening a a brand new PC. This dingy styrofoam carton here may not look like much because it doesn't have the outer cardboard, unfortunately, but if you take a look inside, you'll see that these components are still sealed in the factory packaging. This is one of those once in a lifetime experiences here on Vintage Geek that I'll actually get to open one of these just as if I were opening up a brand new IBM PC Junior from 1984. So let's get into it here on Vintage Geek. As I mentioned, we don't have the outer box covering for this particular carton of the PC Junior, but it looks that everything inside is in original factory condition, just as if we had just purchased it yesterday. I'm going to take each piece of the system out one at a time, and we're going to take a look at it, just as if I was evaluating a brand new computer. We're going to start with the keyboard. Now, I will be honest, this keyboard packaging was not technically sealed, although I don't know if it actually was originally. It's kind of just a bag. But if we take out the keyboard and take a look at it, it looks extremely clean. So I have no reason to believe that it's not original. All the keys feel great. Everything is really clean as far as the labeling on all the keys. I mean, it certainly looks factory fresh. One of the things that's interesting about these particular keyboards is that it's a very early design for infrared wireless technology. You can actually see the uh, IR receiver and transmitter here. And apparently if you put batteries in this, it can actually talk to the computer wirelessly. I will also note that this is the later keyboard design. The earlier keyboard design was equally hated among computer enthusiasts. It was a chiclet design that was uh, very terrible from everything that I've read about it. I don't actually have one of those keyboards, so I can't tell you from first-hand experience, but the pictures of it make it look like it would be absolutely terrible to work on. This one seems much more serviceable. Next, we're going to take a look at what was under the keyboard section in the box here. We've got the guide to operations book from IBM. Let's see how this looks. It's like we got the original customer response form in here for the PC Junior. Also, it looks like there's a uh, letter in here. Let's see what this says. Dear new owner, thank you for purchasing an IBM PC Junior. We appreciate your expression of confidence in selecting IBM and want you to know we have made every effort to provide you with a useful and reliable product at an affordable price. Hopefully that would be self-evident as you actually use the machine, but uh, I'm glad they put it in letter form. It seems very official. Now we have a uh, keyboard difference chart. The IBM personal computer keys and key combinations are actually mapped to different functions on the PC Junior version. I can see where that could be helpful, especially if someone was actually familiar with already using an IBM PC. And we've got the guide to operations, which much to my excitement is still completely sealed. I'm not even going to open this because I think we have an unsealed copy somewhere. Oh, and it's got the exploring the PC Junior disc inside the little booklet here. And going further into the box here, we've got a sealed version of hands-on basic for the IBM PC. I assume this is going to have some self-tutorials and things like the other books we've used for other systems, but uh, really cool to see this in factory sealed packaging. And it looks like we've got a couple of cords here. Actually, just one cord. This is the uh, power supply brick for it. It's a pretty beefy thing right here. One of the things that I read about the PC Junior is that they used a lot of proprietary connectors for everything. So unlike the IBM PC, and PC compatibles, which all basically had the same form factor connectors, DB connectors, the same keyboard connector, etc. A lot of the components, or rather all of them for the PC Junior were custom pinouts and custom cables. This power adapter is no exception, and you can actually see there's three pins in it, which is a non-standard design. It's not a standard IEC cord. Obviously, it's got its own power supply, but definitely would be specific to the system. So I'm glad that we have it. And now for the moment I've been waiting for, 
to actually take this IBM PC Junior, the computer itself, out of the packaging. Now, it has its own little separate compartment here for the computer itself. But if we take a look, these are the original straps, original bag. The bag is absolutely sealed. It has the original sticker on it. It has not been harmed in any way. Now, I know a lot of you out there are probably about to have a heart attack because there is a consensus among collectors that with things that are sealed, you should leave them sealed to protect their value. I do agree with that, and we try to do that here at the museum as much as possible. But in this case, I'm really interested in doing this more for the opportunity for you as the viewer to experience opening a PC Junior along with me. And this opportunity only comes along once, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Now, the sticker that's been undamaged on this says, lift tab to remove bands, do not use knife or scissors, so I'm going to follow those instructions. It looks like each one of these bands does have this little kind of removable tab, so here we go. Well, that was strangely satisfying. Look at that. That is a beautiful piece. I'm not sure that I've ever seen a computer from this era actually new. Well, except for when I was my computer when it was brand new. But other than that, it comes with this IBM PC Junior sampler, which is also sealed, of course. I assume that's a floppy disk. This machine is really looking great. Now, if I look at the front of this, it's got the original cardboard insert for the floppy disk. We have seen some other systems that have that, but this one is genuine. I know that it was there from the factory because it's never been opened before. One of the things the PC Junior did, which I actually thought was pretty smart if you were going to compete with the likes of Atari, Commodore, and Apple, was to use cartridges uh, to load programs rather than discs or cassettes. And they do have two cartridge slots on the front of the IBM PC Junior, which looks pretty convenient. There's also the actual receiver, I believe, for the keyboard wireless which is right on the front. Now, I've heard that the wireless keyboard, you can really only have it within a certain distance of the machine. It's uh, not very long range at all. So uh, we'll have to see what that's like. But again, this is just a really super clean piece of hardware. And it's, uh, it's actually really cool to just be holding it, to be honest with you. I'm just gonna take a look at the underside. And it looks like we've got the, the factory sticker here. It was manufactured in Armonk, New York, 1983 the copyright on it so this well i don't know what production run it is there's probably some website that has a cross reference to tell us what the serial number is when it was manufactured maybe something similar to a vin identifier on a car we'll have to check that out at some point but again just really cool to be holding this computer and it's never been used before and now we get to the pc junior monitor now this one i'm actually not sure if it's factory sealed but do we, we do have the original box the box was open I'm gonna go ahead and open up the box, and see what we've got inside. Now, it does look like we've got original plastic wrapping. I don't know how this would have been set up from the factory, so I can't verify for sure. But, I mean, it looks like it probably is. This, this cord is actually still wrapped in its original tape and covering. There's a sealed PC Junior monitor manual for the color display right here. Set that aside. Some of these have full styrofoam surround around the side, but this particular one just has these, you know, quarter pieces. So I can probably just take these out and maybe I can still slide this. I just didn't want to be trying to lift it. Sometimes it gets a little awkward lifting things out of the box. this back. Okay. I mean, I will say this, if this was actually used at any point, whoever used it did a pretty good job of putting the original factory packaging back in place. This looks like original tape on the front of the monitor in all of these places with the 
actual wrapping here. Um, all the styrofoam looks like it's in really good shape. And of course the condition of the unit itself looks really clean also. Let me just go ahead and kind of pry back the, the paper here. I can't imagine that this would have ever been used. This definitely feels new. I mean, just the, the plastic itself, you can just tell there's just no dinginess at all. Like all of the monitors I've seen that have this kind of texture always kind of have that look of, you know, like a little bit of dirt and grime over the years. And they usually have yellowing as well because of the chemical exposure of the plastics over the years and being exposed to sun through windows and so forth. This one is absolutely pristine. So looking at the front of this monitor, in addition to being super clean and likely never used, you've got three controls on the front here. You've got the normal brightness and contrast for the monitor. You also have a volume control here because this particular monitor, unlike most IBM products, actually has a built-in speaker. Again, this product was built to compete with the likes of the Apple II, the Commodore, and other home targeted computers. So having a speaker was important. You would need that for games and for other things that would use in a home environment versus a commercial environment, which is where IBM was quite frankly used to operating. I also noticed that underneath, there's a, a bracket here that comes out. So if you wanted to put a little bit of extra height on the monitor, maybe make it angled up a little bit, you could just put this little foot uh, rest out and that would uh, work like that. It's uh, very, very tight to move because again, this is a new device, which is really cool. Let's take a quick look at the back. And again, this was built in Armonk, New York. It's got all of the name plating on it. It's an IBM 4863. And these cables that come off at the power and the video connector are still wrapped in their original wrapping here, which is really neat. The last thing I want to note about the monitor in particular is looking at the actual vents on top of the monitor uh, for airflow that all monitors typically have. The one difference in looking at this because it's a new device is that the actual screen mesh that's underneath the grills is completely shiny. And I don't think that I've ever seen that before. Every monitor that I've ever had, there's always dust buildup and everything inside, no matter how much you try to you know, blow it out with cleaner and everything, it just doesn't have that shine to it. And uh, it's really unique to see that. We set everything up for our PC Junior and plugged all the connectors in, got everything set up the way it's supposed to be in the manual. Unfortunately, when we went to actually power it up, we only get two beeps out of the system, and that's as much as we've been able to get out of this particular PC Junior. Uh, looking at things online, as well as the limited section of troubleshooting in the book, it appears that this is beyond the normal, something's not plugged in right, or a battery's dead. It appears there may be something wrong with the motherboard, or possibly RAM. We uh, pulled everything out of the system, which was recommended by one of the internet forums, just to see if it would persist, and if we got any different results. Unfortunately, the two beeps is all we can get. I guess this is a lesson to say that uh, even things that are brand new in the box can still have problems. And indeed, I'm sure that there were a number of these PC juniors back in the day that also were failures out of the box. Um, that doesn't mean that we're giving up on this by any means. We actually have a couple of other PC juniors that are admittedly not nearly as clean as this particular model. Boy, the inside of this thing was just absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen a, a vintage computer that looked as good as this one does. And uh, we're gonna keep working on it, but that will have to be in a later video on Vintage Geek. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe. It's gonna help us a lot as we go forward. And if you'd like to support the Vintage Geek channel even more, you can head to our merch store online. The link's in the description. We've got great shirts that can match your favorite computer of choice, like this IBM style that I'm wearing today and we have others as well as well as some coffee mugs and gift bags etc so you're going to want to check that out once again the links in the description thanks for watching this video today be sure to check out our other videos on the channel and until next time this has been vintage geek